I'm Dick Wright, uh, and we've lived in Montgomery Village since 1971, so that's a total of 46 years. And I'm Teresa Wright. I married this guy, and I have been here with him the same amount of years, 46 years at Montgomery Village. So I'd been at Illinois for maybe three days, uh, and uh, I think Teresa had been there for five, uh, and there was a graduate student mixer at the YMCA. Uh, so I went to the graduate student mixer and, and just doing some square dancing, and I met this young lady from, from Mexico. And she had come to study teaching, study education, because she wanted to go back and work with the rural families of Mexico to help bring them into the 20th century. But I diverted her from that. Uh, and uh, she had instead made her career at the University of Illinois and then here in Montgomery County. Uh, but lo and behold, in the 1980s, with all the troubles in Central America, the rural families of Central America were here and she had the opportunity uh, to explore her childhood ambitions, uh, but not in the place that she had planned. I was a professor of civil engineering at the University of Illinois, and I'd been on the faculty there for 14 years, and had never taken a sabbatical. And I got an offer to come work at what was then the National Bureau of Standards, it's now the National Institute of Standards and Technology, uh, to become a chief of its structure section. We came to Montgomery Village, we came to, to work at NBS, and it was a question of, of looking for a place to stay. Uh, we had four children, uh, still have four children. Uh, they were then ranging in age from uh, seven to about uh, 12. And uh, some of my colleagues at uh, NBS suggested looking at the village. So indeed, we, we drove around with a real estate agent, we came and looked in the village and uh, thought about how good the paths and the tennis courts and the swimming pools would be for our kids, and so we settled here then. We actually bought what had been a model home at the ridges of Stedwick. Well, at the time, you know, I was uh, in Illinois and I was teaching at the junior college there. He showed me the pursuits of the village and I really liked it because there was a lot of things that offered for our children. And as we came, you know, they, they joined, they were at Watkins Mill Elementary, and our son John was at Montgomery Village Middle School, and I got very involved in the PTA there and working there. And in those days, believe it or not, uh, there was only two people that we were Latinos at uh, Watkins Mill Elementary. And when we bought the house, I asked the gentleman, um, how many Latino families are in the village? And he told me that we were number five. Actually, Teresa picked out the house. <laughs> For me, it, of course, it, being a teacher, it was great because we were here and there was an opening teaching at Montgomery Village Middle School to teach Spanish. And then it came to be a full-time position, and I taught at Montgomery Village for several years before going to the high school. I moved from a job where I was a researcher and a, and a teacher uh, to a research manager at uh, then, what was then MBS. And after I'd been there for a year working as managing the structural engineering program, I was asked to become deputy director of the new uh, Center for uh, Building Technology, which expanded my role into thermal engineering, acoustics, and a whole variety of the technologies that uh, they are necessary for buildings. And uh, eventually I was offered the job to become director of the Center for Building Technology. And uh, then in 1990, we merged with the Center for Fire Research, so I also became responsible for the fire research program. One of the things that was most satisfying, I became a, a member of the Patton Ridge Homes Corporation board in the mid-70s. Uh, and at that time, the majority of the board uh, were represented as the developer. We were just moving into the process of, of representing the homeowners. And the homeowners' representatives on the board at the time I joined it were all from Fair Ridge. And uh, so I think one of the things I worked on very hard there was to bring people who lived in the townhouses into the Patton Ridge board and get a balanced rep representation of our interest. Then when I spent, uh, what was it, uh, 27 years on the board of Montgomery Village Foundation, uh, I think the 
work that we did there in, in the long range planning uh, for the development of the community was very important and very satisfying. When we joined here, it was five families. So what I did, I asked for their addresses and I knocked at the doors and then I organized a group in our house here with those women that were in those, those the Latino families to meet here and see what we could do working together. And of course it has grown once I got into school as a teacher, I love it. Because imagine being a teacher and you know the kids, you know where they live, you see them in the supermarket, you know them everywhere, you know their parents, you know when they're playing basketball or tennis or whatever in the, in the swim team. So to me, it has been a great thing because it's been part of the community, but at the same time I was a teacher and I knew the families. I feel that it's very important for the success of students to work with the families all together. Right now, things have changed a lot. You know, we are not five families. All the diversity in our schools is totally different. And uh, so it is working to bring all the parents together to help them to, to all the immigrants to understand the school system so the kids can be successful and we have a new generation of educated students. And I think it'd be very important to have our diverse community effectively represented in the, in the management of the village, on the boards of the homes corporations, on the board of the foundation, uh, and in the volunteer activities so that they really are an integral part of the community. The things that are interesting me most now which affect not only Montgomery Village, but the whole world, is uh, how do we make human society sustainable so that we don't destroy the natural resources upon which we depend? And the other issue is how do we uh, deal with the threat of climate change? Are we going to make the world uninhabitable? And how do we, are we going to deal with the more severe climate and weather extremes that will result from the climate change that has been occurring? Extreme weather and climate events, the droughts, the wildfires, the hurricanes, uh, the heat waves, they're going to become more intense and we have to adapt to them. And that's going to affect Montgomery Village as well. I think the thing that the people don't seem to realize is how affordable Montgomery Village is and how many amenities are there for high quality of life. Well, my house and niece, you're going to laugh, my house and niece are students, it's kids. I love them, and, you know, for instance, we have, oh, one of the things that I love, because, you know, with the minority community, a lot of them don't know English. So we are very lucky we have the Saturday School and Watkins Mill High School, you know, for all the schools in the area, but we also have English classes for the parents. Uh, so one of my great interests now is working on I'm, I'm chair of the American Society of Civil Engineers Committee on Sustainable Infrastructure Education. We're trying to be sure that all civil engineers, after all, if you, if you graduated from college before the year 2000, you never heard the word sustainability. Uh, so we have to educate the practicing engineers to understand the principles and practices. Uh, and I'm also very much concerned uh, with the safety of our built environment, uh, the ability to uh, function safely and uh, effectively uh, under the circumstances that uh, climate and weather and other effects will bring to it. Uh, so those are my main interests. Uh, I do try to get some exercise, <laughs> uh, so that's why you see me biking around the village almost every day. Fortunately, I can still get out there on the bicycle and go. The, the, the bicycle route's a very simple one. Uh, I do it different directions each day so it doesn't get too boring uh, but uh, say start out from here and come up to Apple Ridge Road and go down to Watkins Mill Road and turn around then come back along Apple Ridge Road until you get to uh, Shadow Oak Drive go down Shadow Oak Drive and out into Arrowhead Road and out Arrowhead Road until you hit the circle at the end of it and come back and then come back here so that's a pretty level bicycle ride uh, and uh, easy for an old man to do. Because I've been in the school system for so long, now the kids call me grandma. I'm the abuelita of the school, and that really helps me a lot because the kids trust me, and the parents do, but we have to work together. That is an interest in folk music that was given to me when I was a teenager by my father. Uh, and that way you can really understand how various groups in our society uh, are affected by life. Uh, when you hear their songs. And uh, so I've been uh, 
following those things now for about 80 years and uh, still enjoying them. <laughs>